Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're creating a series of herringbone patterns in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to do one that is sort of more zigzag style and one that is upright. Create a new file. I'm choosing new file. It would be helpful to make a document the same size as I'm making and use my dimensions at least the first time you do this. I'm making a document 2000 by 2000 pixels in size. I'll click create. I'm going to the rectangle tool. I want a white fill and a black stroke. I'm going to click once in the document. I'm going to create a rectangle that is 600 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall. I want my stroke weight to be an even number, so I'm going to choose eight points here. Click on stroke and make sure that align stroke to center is selected so that the stroke is aligned over the very edge of the shape. So a little bit is outside the shape and a little bit is inside the shape. And that's why you need an even number here because you need half of the stroke outside the shape and half of the stroke inside the shape. We're going to make a duplicate of this shape. So just hold the Alt or Option key as you drag a duplicate away and then rotate this around 90 degrees. And you're going to line these two shapes up to each other. I'm using the Smart Guides here to make sure that they are aligned really nicely. You want to make sure that that intersect line appears. If you're not 100% sure and you need to be 100% sure, if you're not 100% sure things are lining up, choose View and then Outline. If things do not line up, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see a space or you're going to see a sort of doubling up of lines. You're going to see that these two shapes are not in the exact same alignment. So you want to make sure that in this view, everything looks neat and tidy. When you finish, choose View and go back to GPU Preview. That ensures everything is nicely lined up. We're going to select over this, hold the Shift key as you rotate it just 45 degrees. So you just want it to look like this. To make our pattern, we're first of all going to turn our artboards off with view and hide artboards. It just makes life a little bit easier. Object, pattern, make. You're going to set your tile type to grid. You're going to make sure that this icon is not dark. So you don't want it to look like this. You want it to look like this with a line through it. You're going to set the width to 849 and then the height to 283. These are the dimensions that you need for your pattern tile to make sure that everything lines up really, really neatly. So when we zoom in here, all the lines look the same thickness and they're all butting up to each other really, really nicely. If you want to see more shapes, you can go here to copies and increase this to 9 by 9. It has no effect at all on the final patterns, just what you're seeing on the screen. If you're happy with what you've got, just click Done. So this is the first of our patterns. Let's just go and test it out. I'm going to delete those shapes. I don't need them any longer. I'm going to drag out a rectangle. Let's go and fill it with our new pattern. At this point, if you want to change your colors, you can do so. Go to the Recolor Artwork dialog, click Advanced, and then here you'll see that neither the black or the white have arrows. That's because we're using black and white. So you want to make sure that the line there is an arrow. If you don't have a color here, click here to add the color. Make sure it reads as an arrow. Now we can go to the edit option and we can start changing our pattern. It's going to unlock the harmony colors. You want to make sure that you've got all your colors here. So I've got my black and I can change the color of my black by just adjusting it here. I've got two colors here. I'm just going to remove the one that's not actually in use in the document. So now you can go and fool around with the colors that you've got here to get a result that you like. Click OK when you're done. This of course adds another pattern to the swatches panels. So we've got our original design and we've got our newly colored version. Now creating the upright version is a similar sort of process. I have a new document here. It's a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. I'm going to the rectangle tool. This time I'm going to create a shape 100 pixels wide by 300 pixels tall. I'm going to again make sure that my stroke width is an even number of points. So I'm going to make this a little bit heavier in terms of stroke width. I'm going to set it to eight. 
making sure also that it goes over the middle of the shape so that it's aligned to centre. So part of the stroke is outside and part of the stroke is inside. So we can see what's going on. We're also going to select the fill and apply a different colour fill to the shape. I'm just going to choose a sort of turquoise blue. I'm going to alt drag a duplicate of this shape around. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm just going to line it up to the very edge of this shape. Again, we need to make sure that these two shapes are overlapping. So you're going to be looking for those smart guides to tell you that you have everything correct. Select over the shapes and in the transform panel, you can get to that by choosing window and then transform. You can check the width of this shape should be 400 pixels by 300 pixels. That tells you you've got everything aligned really neatly. These two shapes are still selected. So I'm going to alt drag a duplicate of those away and again line them up exactly. Check that the measurements here are whole numbers 500 by 400 looking good. I'm going to reselect the last two shapes I created and again alt drag on a PC that's option drag on a Mac and just make sure that they go into the exact right spot. Now I'm not seeing that they're quite correct in terms of this side here, let's just check and see. Well, they are correct because the width and height are the correct values, 600 and 500. We're just looking for whole numbers there. This is the basis for my pattern. So again, I'm just going to hide my artboards for now. So view hide artboards. So I'm going to select over my shapes and choose object, pattern, make, click OK. In the Pattern Options dialog, I'm going to select Tile Type and I'm going to select Brick by Row and I'm going to set the Brick Offset to one half. And you should see here that this shape here is going to line up with this one in a minute. We're just going to run this up in a vertical direction. So we're going to adjust the height to 300. And then we're going to set the Width to 600. And when you do that, you should see that your pattern is a solid pattern. I'm going to set it so I'm seeing 9 by 9. So I can see that this pattern is filling out really nicely. This 9 by 9 has got nothing to do with the final pattern. It's just showing me what I'm seeing on the screen. I'm really happy with that. I'll click Done. We can test this out by creating a rectangle and filling it with our new pattern. The pattern also can be easily recolored by selecting the Recolor Artwork dialog. Click Advanced Options. Here, if you want to be able to change the black, you'll need to add the color black. Make sure that this is an arrow, not just a dash. If you're going to edit, you'll now be able to adjust the colors in the pattern. You'll typically find that you've got two blacks, so you need to work out which is the black that is actually black and this one is, so that means that this one in here is not black, so I'm just going to remove it. I can unlock the colors by clicking here, so I can independently adjust these two colors. You can also adjust colors down here by increasing the brightness, for example, and or the saturation. You can also choose the color using the hue slider. When you're happy with what you've got, click OK. You will, of course, have your original herringbone pattern and this newer version. You can scale these patterns inside the shape by choosing Object Transform Scale. Don't select Transform Objects, so deselect that. And then you can increase or decrease the scale of the pattern to suit. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.